Miss Taylor, you are here to prove to your ex, Mr. Thompson, that he is not your 18-year-old daughter's father. You say he's accusing you of disappearing and hiding your daughter, Miss Turner, for 14 years. But you claim you kept her away because you are certain he is not her father. Mr. Thompson, you claim you've always known Miss Turner was your child and searched for Miss Turner for 14 years. So, Miss Taylor, why did you keep your daughter away from Mr. Thompson? First off, the lifestyle that Mr. Thompson was living at the time, I really didn't want that for my daughter. And my mother had my daughter uh, while I was going through something. And I spoke with my mother about him coming to see her. And my mother said, no, she would let me handle it when I got back. When I came home, I didn't know where Mr. Thompson was. I spoke with a friend of mine, and I was told that Mr. Thompson had gotten married. And at that point, I didn't want to bring drama into his relationship. Mr. Thompson, did you know Ms. Taylor was pregnant? Yes. Were you involved in the pregnancy? Yes. You were? In what way? She was pregnant three months. We were still together. And then that's when, you know, she went her way and I went mine, but she just up and disappeared. So... I moved to another state. Did you move to another state before or after you had the baby? After. I don't so, know. So, Mr. Thompson, you were away when she had the baby. You weren't around, but did you know she had the baby? Were you informed? No. No, I wasn't informed she had the baby. You didn't get the pictures of her when she was a baby that I sent to you? Yeah. When I came back to my grandma's house, my grandma had died. I went to turn down the old house and I found some of her belongings. And I saw some baby pictures there. And I looked, I said, this must be my baby. You see these pictures? Yes. But you, you think it's your child, but you right. don't know. Right. What information do you have about this baby? No information. Do you have the birth date? No birth date, no name. Do you know the gender? Do you Nothing. know if it's a girl or... I didn't or know a... if it was a girl or a boy. Are you asking people what happened? She only had one best friend in Louisiana. And when I say they best friend, they are best friend. I asked her everything I possibly could. She had told her, don't tell me nothing. You told your best friend, don't tell him anything? Nope. When I was talking to my friend, she told me, oh, the last I heard, he was doing good, and he had gotten married, and he was into church. And then at that point, I really didn't ask any more questions. Let me ask you this. He's there with you for the first three months before he goes away. You have the baby. You're, you move away. Why is it you don't think he's your daughter's biological father? The reason why I'm saying that is because during this time, before I met Mr. Thompson, I was having an affair with a married man. Ooh. And being that I was having an affair with a married man, honestly, I didn't know if it was a married man's child or Mr. Thompson's child. This other man, the man you were dating, you're saying that child was by him? I have strong feelings that the married man is my daughter's father. You did not tell me and he, you was with another man. You had he's all this saying stuff to me going on. Right now. Who does your daughter believe is her father? She believes that Mr. Thompson is her father. Well, I, I, can, can I ask her something? Why you take my baby and run off and don't do nothing? I did it. I'm just take you know off. where I was at. I did all not take. No, I didn't. Look, you knew where I was at all the years because I put on. The, I went on the, on the internet, made these pages. All you did was hop on there and call me right up. Doop. Hey, Terrell. He wants to know why you didn't inform him. You believe the child was this married man's child, but you say your daughter believes that Mr. Thompson is her biological father. Does she believe that because you told her? Yes. So, now, if you told her he is her biological father, why not tell him where she is? When I did get con in contact with Mr. Thompson, which was in October of 2012 via Facebook, that's when he started to know where we were and where she was. Did you ever tell the married man... I told both of them. ...that he potentially could be the father? I told both of them. I told both of them. And what was his response? He didn't want nothing to do with it. Okay. Which is why you then just said, 
to your daughter, Mr. Thompson is your biological father because well, you knew that the married man didn't want anything to do with it. Correct. And so, Mr. Thompson, when you got this message on Facebook, what were you thinking? When she contacted me, I'm happy. All I want to do is talk to my daughter. And I didn't know my baby. Not, I didn't know nothing. I didn't know how to look for my baby. So have you ever met or seen I your daughter? I never have saw a hair on her head. Only she sent me pictures. 18 years? 18 years. Well, she is here today. I won't make you wait any longer. <clears throat> Jerome, will you please escort my Linda Turner into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Hi, Hi, Ms. Turner. Thank you for joining us. You know why we're here. Yeah. And it's all about you. Your mom has testified. Yes. Mr. Thompson's testified. But we want to know from you, who did you grow up believing your biological father was? Well, in 2000, uh, 2012, um, my mom informed me that Mr. Thompson was my biological father. And so I kind of formed a relationship with him from then. Before on. 2012, who did you believe your father was? I didn't have one. I didn't ask about it because I didn't want to. In, have a in your entire life? Yeah. You never asked your mom, who's my father? Nope. Why didn't you feel you could ask your mom? I felt like it was going to be an argument and. Um, we would just fight about it, and I would never get the answer. I'm sorry. That's okay. So your mom came to you in 2012 and said, Mr. Thompson is your biological father. Yes. Then at what point did you find out that there was a possibility that Mr. Thompson was not your biological father? Just last week. Really? <laughs> and that's hard for you? Yeah. How did you find out? I was talking with my sister, and she had brought it up. And then when I was talking to my mom, she also had brought it up in a conversation on the phone. I mean, you waited until 2012 to just get one name. Yeah. <laughs> and then two weeks ago, or a week ago, they tell you that may not be... that. It's almost like getting ripped from you. What did you feel like in that moment? I was very hurt because... I formed a relationship with Mr. Thompson, and then to hear that there could be another guy, if he's not my father, then I've, I have this relationship with somebody that I don't really even know like that. Like, I, I shouldn't even know him. Ms. Taylor, this is obviously confusing for your daughter. Yes, it is. And unfortunately, you are the cause of that confusion. Yes, I am. You know that. Yes, I do. Why not in 2012 just be honest and say there were two possibilities? I was really trying to protect her. And I think me trying to protect her, what I'm getting from all of this is that I hurt her more than anything. That, that's what I'm seeing. And I want for my daughter to find whatever peace that she's trying to find. But why? Why wait all this time? I'm 18. <laughs> 18. And I have to... <laughs> I have to come to court to find out who my father is. When you say to me that until 2012, you felt you didn't have the right to ask who your father is, that hurts my heart to hear a young girl say that. What did it feel like growing up without a father? It, it really sucked because I had, like, I'm in choir. You know, I run track and stuff like that. And even my prom, like, to have not both my parents there, that was hurtful, you know? Because <laughs> I got to take pictures with her, but I didn't get to take a picture with my father. 
you know? And then, like, my sporting events and stuff. I would love to have both of them there, not just one. And sometimes it was none. So it was very hurtful. And then you see, like, in the audience that, like, everybody has their brothers and their sisters and their moms and dads all cheering for them. And I didn't have that. <laughs> I didn't have it. And it's really hard, because I always wanted that. You want the answers. I want to give them to you. I do. I should not have kept this, but I was at the point where you never asked, you never mentioned it. Yeah, but why should you I know, have to ask who my father but is? But it would, yeah, why? right, you don't. Why do I have to ask that? But if, if... Because as my mother, you should have told me right away. Yeah, maybe I should have, Nana told you right away, but at the end of the day, me as a mother, it's my job, regardless of however I get beat down about this, I was protecting you. The way you protected me was so, not okay. in the right way. You, your mom's saying she was trying to protect you. Yeah. I you don't, don't feel know. that. I don't feel but it she... because, okay, if you're here to protect me, why wait so long, you know? You should have came forward in the beginning and said, hey, what has your mom told you about this other man? Only thing I knew is that she was sleeping with him and he was married. That's it. That's all I know. You don't have a name. Don't have a name. I have a nickname, but that's it. Like, how do you go off of that? How do you start searching for yourself? You know, what would you like to say, Mr. Thompson? You said you was protecting my daughter. Well, this don't only affect her because she have two sisters and two brothers, and I have put them on the phone. And they believe that you are their sister because that's what I've told them. And for the longest, I always had it in my heart that you was my daughter. I never knew where you was at. I never knew your name, never knew what you even looked at like. But I never stopped thinking that you was my daughter. And you've brought some evidence to the court. Yeah. I see it in your hand. I made a memory book for it, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> so you made a book. Yeah. For Mr. Thompson. Oh, and beautiful <laughs> pictures of you growing up. Wow, look at all of these pictures. You see them? So these are your graduation. When you look at these pictures, Mr. Thompson, what are you thinking? That's my baby. <laughs> you believe it when you see this? Yep, this is gonna be my baby. Jerome, will you please hand this book to Mr. Thompson? She wanted you to be able to see the moments that you have missed. Ms. Taylor, is there anything else you'd like to say to your daughter or to Mr. Thompson before I read the results? Honestly, I just apologize to both of you for going through all of this and I feel like I should have did more early on and I just didn't and that's why we're here now. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. There you go. Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Taylor versus Thompson, when it comes to 18-year-old Mylinda Turner, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Thompson, you are not her father. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ms. Taylor, do you know where the man that you say would be the other possibility? Do you know where he is? Yes. You do? <laughs> do you know how to get in touch with him? I need to call my mother before I leave here today because I spoke with her last night. And as weird as this is, I haven't seen him in years either. But my mother did last weekend when she was in Louisiana. 
and he gave her his phone number. So I'm gonna have to call her. Oh, <laughs> did you hear your mom? Yeah, they always say, what you don't know won't hurt you. And... <laughs> but listen, listen, I've heard that saying, <laughs> but you have no idea what's out there for you. It could be beautiful. And you're a strong girl. And your mother is going to make the first step and she's going to reach out. Ms. Lons, you claim that while filming your popular reality TV show, a DNA test determined that the man you believed was your daughter Elite's father was not. After the results came in, you revealed to Elite that her uncle, the defendant, Mr. Randolph, may be her biological father. Ms. Noel, you state that it was devastating to find out that the man you believed was your dad was not, and you now believe that his brother is your father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Randolph, you claim that even though both you and your brother had a sexual relationship with Ms. Lon, you do not believe you are her biological father either. That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Now, in full disclosure, I must say, I know this family. I have counseled this family. So with that said, Ms. Lons, it's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Um, tell the court, why is it so important to resolve these issues today? Well, this happened like 30 years ago and you know, my past has always haunted me no matter what. I'm a recovering drug addict and a lot of more other things. I don't hang on the streets and I don't run amok with the gang members and I have not been back to jail. So I, I learned a lot from it. I could be dead for the things I used to do, but I'm not gonna quit and tell my daughter and me put closure on who her father is. I'm very proud of you. Cause let's be honest, most people know you as Keisha Cole's mother. They think of you and they say, oh, the antics, the drama. But I know you, I've talked to you. You're a mother, you have heart, and you know what, most importantly, you have courage. And these tears is for her. She still has to live with my mistakes. And I'm here to correct it. That's what mothers do. Ms. Noel, I want to talk to you. Yes. Every little girl wants to know who her biological father is. And so when it was determined that the man you thought was your biological father was not, please explain to the court how that affected you. I mean, I felt as if I should have never had tried to even take that step. And I had closed up. I closed up with my mom. I also closed up with Vic, which is the guy that originally we, you know, tested. And, I, and I'm not gonna lie, I, it, it's a, a bitter thing for me. I used to hide this story, you know what I mean? I didn't want anybody to, like I said, I didn't want to judge my mom, but I didn't want to be judged for it, neither. You know what I mean? But there's When you say you used to hide the story, tell me what you used to I mean, to. I just didn't tell anybody that I didn't know who my biological father was. You were ashamed of that? Yes, absolutely. So, Mr. Randolph, six okay. years ago on their reality show, when it was determined that Nephi's father, your, your brother, was not her biological father. Right. And that you could. No. You never were made aware of that. No, until some people called me from around the country and said, Frankie said on national television it's that their uncle could be her father. And I'm like, what? At that point, did you reach out to Ms. Lons? Did you reach out to Ms. Noel? Well, did I, you, is, well that's I, my I, question. I, Once you heard it, like, I feel like, I why didn't, why didn't you contact father. me? Hold on, let's talk one I at a time. I tried to reach Frankie, I didn't but was reached. unsuccessful in doing so. So you did try to reach out to Ms. Yes, Lons? because I'm not in the business of trying to hurt children. When you reached out and you didn't get an answer, what did you do? I can't believe this. The next thing I know, we're here. Gave it to God. Did you ever feel badly about sleeping with your brother's girl? Oh, hold on, Your Honor, let me say this in, in my defense in that regard. Sure. There was, we had a group that consisted of seven members. Our popularity not, and, don't have to take and our group. bad behavior at the time. A lot of things happened. Sure did. A, a lot of things happened, not with just Frankie, but with other people too. So Ms. Noel, talk to me about your childhood. I actually was raised by an amazing family. Um, I was adopted at three months, but there's still a part of me that, you know what I mean, wanted to know. I didn't find out that I was adopted until I was 11 years old. From the time I was 
adopted up until 11, you couldn't tell me that this is, wasn't my family. So I was extremely embarrassed. And, you know, after that, I lashed out throughout my, throughout my teenage years. It's cute. You know what I mean? Yes. First of all, that family that I gave custody to, gave you to, was my family first. Mm -hmm. They took care of me before you were born. I didn't want to drag you through my mess. Thank so you. it's the choices and decisions that I made is the reason why the woman that you are today. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> so Ms. Noel, you decided you wanted to find your biological father. I wanted to find my biological family in general. You know what I mean? I didn't know who my mother was. I didn't, you know, they didn't keep it from me, but I had never seen Frankie's face. I didn't know who my family was, you know what I mean? So after that, yes, I, you know, I wanted to know, you know, who my other siblings were. You know, it was deep. It got deep. You started to believe your sister Nephi's father was your biological father. You know, when we met, everybody just, you know, constantly said, you guys look so much alike, you guys look so much alike. And I'm like, well, duh, because we're sisters. But none of the other siblings looked as much alike as me and my sister. Your sister, yeah, she wanted to out of sister love, wanted so bad for you and her to have the same father. Okay, well, it wasn't, and it hurt me more. Did you ever see your birth certificate? Were you able to look at it and see if there was a man listed, and if so, who that person was. Well, yeah, about 18 years old, you know, my adopted mother felt that I was old enough and David Noel was the guy on my birth certificate. And so, you know, we went into a search for that. So I ended up finding the address on him and I knocked on the door and I gave him the story and he told me, absolutely not, I only reproduce boys. I have five boys and I don't, I don't have that girls. Was me. Frankie, he was on the birth certificate. Yes. Was But that's he... because I was with him while I was carrying him. He actually told me that he just wanted to do the right thing at the time, which was to, to sign the birth certificate. Yeah. And so, so you basically, and he agreed, you, you're going to sign this birth certificate. So she will have... I didn't make a... him sign anything. He volunteered. I was going to put father unknown. But he said, I want to sign this birth certificate. Because my mother didn't raise us like that. And I understood, you know, I, like, I didn't hold anything against him. Actually, I respected him more for being honest. So, Mr. Randolph, do you remember having a relationship with Ms. Lons? I have a relationship with Ms. Lons. I really do. And it goes back to 1974. All right. But the relationship is like this. I'm part of a dance group called the Black Resurgence, who are internationally known for Boogaloo and Robot and Strutting. Her sister, and one of, our, one of the members of our group, her other sister, another member of the group, her and my brother and their friend and I became, were involved in a relationship. But we had that situation, the group of us, had that situation going on with various sets of girls around the neighborhood. Oh, say groupies. When we met Frankie back then, uh, we did what we did. Had I known that it was even suspected that I was the father of any child, I've always stepped up to the plate. Were you ever even aware she was pregnant? I know she was pregnant just about every time she was pregnant. But, I but just think... my brother's, that's my brother's girlfriend. It was your assertion that Ms. Lons mm. was also intimate with other members of the band. And we have another member of your band here today. Oh, I'd like to hear from him. Jerome, will you please escort Mr. Robertson yes. in the courtroom, please? Oh, boy. So, uh, let's get this party started. Well, sir. Well, yeah. Mr. Robertson, thank you for joining us today. We have been here discussing the paternity as it relates to Miss Noel. We've heard testimony from Mr. Randolph, your bandmate, talked about back in the day that you all had lots of sexual encounters <laughs> with fans, <laughs> we'll say that politely, and that perhaps you, Mr. Robertson, and Miss Lons had a sexual encounter or encounters as well. Did you have a sexual relationship with Miss Lons? Yes, I did, Your Honor. You did. What was the nature of your relationship with her? We was a group back there and then, back in the day. We were one of the hottest groups on the circuit at that time coming up. And I was one of the guys that... Uh, All the they girls to, wanted. They used to call me Don Juan, so... Uh, 
I, it was just a group thing, you know. Uh, I never fell in love with none of them. It's just so you're oh, basically man. saying you were having many <laughs> sexual relationships. With you never <laughs> were in a girlfriend boyfriend committed no. relationship. It wasn't a relationship. It was never a relationship. You can't say for certain you did not sleep with Ms. Lons no. during the window of conception. No, you don't I can't know. Say that. I, I really can't say that. If you know you've had a sexual relationship with Ms. Lons, when you see her having children and they are a part of this band, extended family slash village, <laughs> wouldn't a man then say, if I was intimate with her, could this child possibly be mine? No, I did not think that, ma'am, because back in the day, it was not like that. I, and, and, I'm serious about this. This is not funny to me. It's not this is not a joke. Not anymore. I have a beautiful young woman next to me, 30 years old, that has come here for my help, and she gonna get it. Mm. I want some answers. Okay. Yeah. So, t Ms. Noel, <laughs> have you ever heard about Mr. Robertson <laughs> as a potential? Never. Ms. Lyons has stood here and basically admitted her mistake. Never. This is what I've done. This is what I was doing. You have also said we were very sexually active. I don't understand how little people keep appearing and you don't ever say to yourself, could, could this, this child be mine? If Elite was my child, why didn't somebody say something to me 30 years ago? Well, how, because how can I? 30 years ago, I not didn't you. know. I, Elite... God I bless your know. heart. Darling, I wish nothing but the best for you. You look so much like Nefertiria and my children till, yes, we really did think Vic was your father, oh. especially because of Frankie and his relationship. But no way under God's green earth that I ever think that she was my child. I'm just trying to put it in the right perspective to where my daughter won't look at me like I'm trailer park trash. I know how badly you want the answers. I know that. And, and I, I know how bad much you're... I enough to blame it on another man because at this point to me, it matters. What matters to me is how she's feeling. And that's what Either matters way, to me. I forgive my mom, you know what I mean? And I'm so thankful that, you know, we have a chance to build a relationship. But at the end of the day, like, I deserve to know everything. Yes. And... It's just and, that and... simple. And your aunt. Ms. Like, I'm and, and, not a child anymore. I want you to take a moment, and I want you to explain to these men and to your mother how living with this pain has affected you. I mean, I respect you guys for being honest, most importantly, but at the end of the day, you guys have to take some sort of responsibility for your actions. I know it's easy to say, we were children, we were doing this, we were popular. Like, okay, I get that part, but like... At some point, like, you have to take responsibility for your actions back then. And I can see in your eyes that this really is hurtful. This is, this is yeah, hard to not take a in. a joke. I thought that I was over it, um, but I'm not. And you know? it's caused a wedge between you and your mom. Big. Explain. Our relationship really hasn't been the same since I did the first DNA test. I'm still holding a few grudges, not only against my mother, but whoever my father is. I don't want to be judgmental towards my mother because I know that due to the circumstances and being in the streets and being on drugs, and I don't want to judge her for that. But I, on another note, I feel like, why do I have to continue to suffer, you know, from the things that happened in the past, the things that I couldn't control then and the things that I can't control now? You're a beautifully smart young woman. Thank you. Talented. Thank you. But you are a human being. Yeah. And you have a right to know... I do. ...who your father is. I do. And I have answers for you. Okay. Jerome, the envelope, please. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Lons versus Randolph Robertson, and as to whether Larry Robertson is her biological father, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Robertson, you are not her father. Are you okay, Ms. Noel? I'm fine. Are you ready for the next result? Yes. 
In the case of Lons versus Randolph Robertson, as it pertains to 30-year-old elite Noel. And as to whether William Ronnie Randolph III is her biological father, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Randolph, you are not her father. Mm. Oh. I'm very sorry, Miss Noel. Well, as long as you want to keep looking, we don't look. Thank you. That's it. We have managed to get the truth in the present. And I'm happy for that. I'm happy yes. for Ms. Noel because it's about moving forward. And actually, for my mom to say that, like, she supports my decision and to continue to look, that is something different for us. So I feel like this had to happen so that, you know, me and my mom's relationship can get better. And for her better to today. say Amen. that she supports me, to continue to do that, that is another step. Mr. McCormick, you say you thought you found the perfect woman until you discovered the love of your life with just a serial cheater on a rampage. You say Miss Ball is a shameless adulteress and there is no way you are her son Gavin's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Ball, you admit to having stepped out on your relationship in the past, but you are positive Mr. McCormick is the father of your son and you intend to prove paternity today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. McCormick, what do you mean she's a serial cheater? Well, Your Honor, yeah, I found text messages. Uh, I've seen her getting in strange vehicles. That's not true. Uh, I've seen videos. That's not true. Uh, what haven't I found? Like, you know, ha there's no way that I could be this child's father. I'm starting to become none to all this. It's, it's getting old. Your Honor, um, there, there have been several times I have cheated, and I've been honest with him and, and told him about the, the times I have cheated, but uh, he's become crazy and, like, obsessed with making up things, seeing things. There's no, there's no way I've done all the things he said. He is the father of my son. You can look at Gavin and see he's your son. All right, so take me back. I want to know how this all started. The nature of your relationship. How did it begin? Um, we saw each other at a party, and when I first saw him, I was physically attracted to him. And so um, I started talking to him. I asked him if he wanted to hang out. And um, I said, where, where can we hang out? And he said, you can go to my house with me. And we've been together ever since. Seven all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so the relationship seemed like it started off pretty good. I thought I had found the one, Your Honor. You know, I was in love. I, you know, I, she was good with my daughter. Uh, my family liked her. We, you know, we like sports. We play sports together. Um, you know, I never thought she would cheat. I mean, you know. And I've admitted when I've cheated on you. Yeah, I mean, but there's also been other times. So, Mr. McCormick, what does it feel like knowing Ms. Ball has a child and it may not be yours? Uh, it really hurts, you know, because, uh, you know, I'm a softie. And, uh, you know, she cheated early in a relationship and I, it just kind of put doubt, with it, you know, in my mind throughout. The bond and... you have with Gavin, there's no way that could be a bond and not be father and son. Your Honor, I mean, I've even brought some examples. I mean... You brought an exhibit? I brought an exhibit, Your Honor. Please step up. Let's review that exhibit. May I cross? Yes. Mm. Well, Your Honor, this is how you catch a serial <laughs> cheater. All right. Okay. Well, the first time, uh, she said she was going to go to the gas station uh, to meet a family member. I kind of stayed back, and then I was, I was following her I saw her getting to a truck of a strange guy. He was like 25 years old. Why would you let me get in the okay, truck? Okay, is that Why you or is that the strange guy? <laughs> That's the strange guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I asked her, I said, I, I saw her getting into a truck. I asked her who it was. She said it was another family member, which I know is like 50, 60 years old. He doesn't wear his hat sideways and blare music like that. So it was a young guy. A young guy. Yeah. And you believe she was cheating? She was. I mean, what else would you be doing? Why else would she lie about it? And she was acting fishy before she took off. That's the reason I'd followed her. All right. 
And then what is next on this exhibit? Well, and I saw her getting to another truck. I guess she just likes trucks. I like trucks. She's a trucker. She says she likes trucks. I guess she does. <laughs> She's fond of trucks. Well, I went to her house. I went, I was in the basement talking to someone. Uh, she didn't even know I was there. Next thing you know, she goes out to get into uh, this truck with a guy and another girl. Uh, I asked her what she was doing. She said she was going hunting. Your Honor, it was summertime. She doesn't even hunt. If you, if you saw your husband get in a vehicle with someone, wouldn't, wouldn't you say, what are you doing getting in a vehicle with another female? He wouldn't be getting well, in no vehicle. Thank you. You could see it, but you couldn't get there and say something? And matter of fact, you waved at me as you drove by. Oh, I waved. She waved as she went by, right. yeah. Right, but, but I'm gonna deny it, but, but I know you saw me. At this point, mm. how many times do you believe Ms. Ball cheated on you up to this point? I mean, yeah, at least, I'd say a couple times. She admitted the first time. She okay. admitted cheating on me the first time. All right, so is there anything else? Uh, there was a time exhibit? I came home uh, from work and there was a text message on the phone. I picked up the phone, uh, pretended to be Miss Ball, and uh, you know, texted some sexual stuff. They texted back. I texted, can we do the same thing that we did uh, the last time we hung out? And, you know, he said some things, and that's when the picture of the junk came through. <laughs> And, you know, that's what maybe... So I know something was going on. Oh, yes. Something okay, was I've, going on. I found some, you know, pictures as well. Uh, there's some nudes, she said. And, I have you know, never going taken through the nude phone, pictures. And they yeah, do. Have I sent them to anyone? I sent them to you. I'm a bigger girl. I don't take naked pictures just for anybody. Yeah. Ron, you know that. So you saw the nude pictures. I saw the nude pictures, Whatever. which she said was for me, but they... I never got them. What's next on this exhibit? Uh, well, I found a strange video or audio um, of her. She said that it, that it was me. It was, it was her and, like, there was another... Uh, I heard her say to a girl and a guy, you could tell something shady you, was going your on. Your Honor, when you butt down... It was a sex video? No. It's, something shady was going on. He heard a butt down. You know, it goes... She's a beast. <laughs> That's me having sex. Yes, he's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I heard a girl say, you know, you when you bugged out someone. When the call connected, what did you hear or see? I heard another female say, you can have him now, girl. And she denied that. She said that it wasn't her voice. Oh, so you think they're having a threesome? A threesome. Menage a trois. So you're gonna say, you're gonna be disrespectful and say that. Uh, and okay. all of this, all of this That's cheating leads you to believe Very. that Gavin is not your biological son. I mean, yeah, and then, you know, all, right. all Gavin situations is your situations going son. on, I'm thinking, how could this kid, you know, be mine? All right, thank well, you so you... much for your exhibit. You can step back over to the podium. Miss mm. Ball? He's crazy. Th that was a lot of information. Mm -hmm. He knows, Gavin, is his But time. you have admitted to cheating. I you have. You said that. I have yes. admitted it. Mm -hmm. I've admitted the times that I was wrong. And I, I think that because of the insecurities that I've created, that anything that he can't absolutely uh, find an answer for, he, it creates doubt. The point is, once you cheat, now that opens the door where... We don't believe nothing you have to say. Right. I mean, that's just yeah. human nature. When I see him with Gavin and you look at them together, you see a picture of them together, they're twins. They look so much alike. Uh, when they added up the dates, when the doctor added up the dates, the dates came to June 20th. I had not messed around since May. And I, and I, I mean, honestly, I, I mean, I'm over a, June 20th, I hadn't messed around since like May 2nd. And we moved in together and- Now um, she's a mathematician. <laughs> So what kind of relationship have you built with Gavin, Mr. McCormick? Tell me about your relationship with this beautiful baby. Uh, we have been together since 2012, Your Honor. Um, and, you know, the relationship I've built with you Gavin... You stepped out, too, so... I'm not a saint, you know, and no babies. That but you know of. Ga <laughs> Gavin and I, are, you know, are close. I was there with her throughout her pregnancy. You know, I went to all the appointments, you know, just trying to do the right thing. Uh, you know, so, I mean, I hope he is mine. And what if he's not? I don't know. He is. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you know... I do. 16 months is, you know, quite... You know, it's a long time to bond. And, it is. You know, and I got a soft heart, so... I don't know. I guess we'll see. You know. You're not going anywhere. You're a good father. Gavin loves you. He's your son. It's You're his... very convincing, Ms. Ball. I'm confident. I'm confident that it's his son. But the problem is, it really isn't definitive because you admit to having sex with 
someone else in the month of May. I do. Gavin was born in January. So if you count back... Hold on. <laughs> May to June, July, August, mm -hmm. September, October, November, December, January. Mm -hmm. That's eight months from May. The doctor, when the doctor did the sonograms, he estimated that I became pregnant around June 20th. And as far as the adva advancements of the baby, it, it adds up. And he was early. I mean, he came 32 weeks. So did you ever tell any of the guys you had the affairs with, did you say to them, I'm pregnant and Gavin could be your child? I, I said I, I'm pregnant, but I, I wasn't going to leave Ryan. So you did say to some of the other... The, there's only two, but yeah, I said to the guy that I... <laughs> not two possible fathers, but I cheated twice, but there was one guy that it could have been... I'm the only I... roundhead that'll stick around. Really? Okay, so the You're... real truth is you had two other guys you'd slept with and one of them you said, I'm pregnant. Yeah, I'm pregnant. And that was with the understanding that this could be your child. Uh, yeah, he knew that we'd messed around at, around the, around that. And how often did you have sex with this guy? It was for about six months. We only had sex a few times, a couple times. I mean, I was in a relationship with Ryan. I was always with Ryan. But you had a six-month affair with the other guy? <laughs> it was more like friend. It was a, more of a friendship. The sex came later, and it, I, you know, I didn't plan on having sex. I mean, I, I saw this guy, a family member sometimes. Well, the bottom line is it's, it's a relationship you carried on for six months, and whether you had sex three times or 30 times, you told this guy, I'm pregnant, mm -hmm. and you may be the father, but I get what you're saying. You immediately... Because you're, you're good at that. You just kind of spin your way out of it. So you were like, I'm pregnant, but I'm staying with Mr. McCormick. Mm -hmm. So in other words, don't press me on it, because mm -hmm. I'm staying with him, mm -hmm. and we just gonna make this baby be his. No, I'm not going to make it be his. Well, that's what you really are saying. He chose. I gave him an option. No, I... no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, as you create and spin the story, you create what you want from the story, and that is that Mr. McCormick is the father. But the real truth is, is you were honest with the other guy. Yeah, I was. And now Mr. McCormick has one foot out the door. He's completely unsure. He's not going He has anywhere. paternity doubts. He uh, says he doesn't know what to do. She had cheated. It's like, you know, we had unprotected sex for, you know, years, and then, you know, or at least a couple years, and then when I found out she had cheated, then, you know, then she ends up pregnant. It just doesn't make sense. That's paternity doubt right there, right, Jerome? Yes, ma'am. That's what we do here. So, where do we go from here? If Gavin is not your biological child... Uh, if he's not my biological uh, child, you know, I, I might just... Have, I might have to leave. I don't know. I, I'm pretty attached to him, Your Honor. If you don't uh, quit doubting me, you are going to leave. Yeah. Because my son's not going to grow up like that. You have a great relationship with him. You know he's your son. Yeah. I mean, I and do love... And all the stuff needs to stop. I really... I love him. But if I you do love, love him, him, you're not going anywhere. And he loves you. What... What's making you emotional now? My little boy loves him. And uh, I know he loves Gavin. There's all this doubt and hurt and stress. Babies feel, you know, they can feel the tension. They can feel when there's, you know, something wrong. And I don't want my child to ever grow up with that kind of, um, you know, environment. I don't want him feeling insecure or feeling doubtful if, of Ryan being his father. Let's just be honest for a moment, Miss Ball. You know you've made a mess. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. And now you're just so desperately trying to clean it up. Right. And you just want it to go away. I want to cut that old part and move forward. I don't want there to be the cheating. I don't want there to be the arguing. I want it to be uh, my son, Ryan, and I having a good time playing, uh, enjoying being a mother and a father together. And I don't want Gavin to have that doubt. That doubt will create an insecurity in my son that will defect his character for the rest of his life. And I do not want my child to ever have any kind of defect or, or issue because of something I've done in my past. There we go. There we go. Yes. I hope I'm his father, Your Honor. All right. There's only one way to find out, and that's to get the results. Jerome? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of McCormick versus Ball, when it comes to 15-month-old 
Gavin McCormick. It has been determined by this court. Mr. McCormick. Yes, Your Honor. You are the father. Thank you. All right, I'm glad, Your Honor. I'm glad. We're now we can move stop forward. Stop the accusations. Let's move forward and raise this little boy. I've made mistakes. I've grown from them, and I'm not going to create the same mess that I just got done cleaning up. I'm ready to focus completely on him, and I hope you are too. If not, you can go somewhere else. I'm not really concerned just because I see how much both of you love one another. Right. I believe in unconditional love. I do. But there's a part of, I think, your love for one another that's so unconditional that it often extends the boundaries out a little too far where you all don't operate in the realm of what's acceptable in a committed relationship because somehow you know he ain't going nowhere, she ain't going nowhere. I'm a little concerned that in this relationship, I want to make sure those other patterns don't develop again because everything you said was true. This little boy will feel mm -hmm. all of the dysfunction, all of the bad energy, mm -hmm. all of the consequences from toxic behavior, right. and you have a beautiful son, and I want you all to make it. Because, Ms. Ball, you have said repeatedly, I'm done with the behavior, I'm done with the behavior, and you may be. I didn't hear that from Mr. McCormick yet, but look, you're gonna have to be done, too. <laughs>